Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! Neither me nor the family involved in the story supports any kind of violence here. This happened about a month ago and I went to look for some Christmas gifts with my sister and her children, both 6 and 8 years old respectively. She had actually planned to buy them a Nintendo Switch after saving up enough money. We walked into that specific game store where we would get the console, alongside Mario Maker 2. Everything has been going fine with the purchase, and we were just about to make it until my sister left her purse in the car. She had to quickly leave while asking me to look after my nephews, while also telling the clerk to wait until she came back. Sure enough, I stayed with the kids and waited. Then a mildly fat woman appeared out of the blue, and she tried to buy the same Nintendo Switch we had already claimed. I then stepped in and went like, excuse me ma'am, that's my Nintendo Switch. We are going to buy it right this second. At the same time, the clerk already sided with me on this one. Immediately after stepping in, the entitled woman wasn't having it. Nonsense! She said that, and this is how the rest of the conversation went. You have more than one of these in your storage, right? Sorry ma'am, this is the last one. And he claimed it first. Shut up! This entitled woman was looking at us in disgust, as if she smelled rotten food, then looked back at the clerk. Why are you going the trouble of waiting for these wet backs to pay with money they don't even have? My nephew began to feel uncomfortable and sad as they were having their perfect Christmas gift taken away by some evil jerk. One of them actually firmly clung to it, never to let go. The entitled woman then pushed him back against a line of new games, which fell on him. This is when madness began. At the same time that woman pushed one of my nephews, my sister came back absolutely irate. The woman got on her face and looked her dead in the eye. You're not worth my time, you punch of beaners. Screw you, she says before spitting my sister in the face. My sister, a former Muay Thai practitioner, did what a mother could ever do to protect her children. She kicked the entitled jerk in the face, knocking her out flat. The cops showed up shortly after. I couldn't remember much of what else happened. I went ahead and immediately helped my hurt nephew as soon as a patch of games fell on him. However, this morning, I talked with my sister about this situation. Now that she was already clear, she tells me that the entitled woman is now facing charges of behaving under the influence. Correct me if I got the wrong terms. Destruction of private property and assaulting a minor. While my sister was also facing charges, these were dropped after reviewing the CCTV footage and our statements. And yes, I returned the next day and bought the Nintendo Switch after they restocked. Because that entitled woman broke the previous one anyhow when assaulting my nephew. We may consider therapy after Christmas and NYE because my poor nephew is still distraught a month after this dispute. Update Regarding my assaulted nephew. Much appreciated for your comments suggesting I should look for a therapist. Right now, I've been looking for a therapist to treat my nephew as soon as the entire Christmas in NYE was over. My sister was the one successful in finding one, as her husband referred her to a friend of his, who happens to be a therapist. I mentioned before that there were two boys, six and eight year old, and the latter was the one assaulted by that lady. He's about to start his therapy session this week. Until then, I've been spending my time with my nephew and he seemed to be doing a lot better. But he was still a bit distraught at what happened. I actually bought him the Mario 3D trilogy as a present because he likes to play Super Mario a whole lot. It goes without saying that we didn't do anything on the matter at the time because we were busy with the December party stuff and the gifts to the rest of the family. Now regarding the fat Karen, I mentioned before that my sister was about to face charges for battery, but everything was dropped when that Karen was exposed on CCTV. I didn't have a deeper conversation with my sis, but two months later, 
She told me in detail that the woman actually had crime records related to her violent and racist behavior. She was even arrested on possession of some illegal substance before. That woman will sit there for a long time to keep it short. And regarding my sister, I'm sorry if I omitted some details about her. There was a time in her life where she suffered from anger management. She had enrolled in Muay Thai lessons to help control her rage. But seeing her thrashing that Karen was the very first time I saw her pissed off. And the greatest fit of rage I have ever seen. In addition to my nephew, she has also undertaken therapy to address this incident. Much appreciated for your time listening to this story from the start. About a decade ago, I worked an early morning shift at a fast food restaurant. We opened at 6 a.m. so I had to be at work at 5 a.m. I would leave my house at about 4.45 a.m. every morning. My management was pretty relaxed about the opening shift. Clocking in up to 10 minutes late wasn't really an ordeal as long as you showed up ready to go. I came outside at 4.45 to find that a local police officer has pulled someone over and is now blocking my driveway. This has happened before but normally in the afternoon. And normally I just ask the officer to move forward or back a couple of feet and then I pull in or out of the driveway. No sweat. This officer however angrily informs me that I will have to wait till he's done. I snap a picture of his car texted to my manager and explained my tardiness. 40 minutes later, the police officer finally moves. I scramble into the car and head to work. I get there 15 minutes before we open. I frantically start to brew tea, pitch ice, having to condense my 50-minute routine into 15. I almost forgot to brew coffee. Opening time rolls around and the first group of customers come in. It's a group of our local police officers led by the captain. I guess they are about to do a shift change. One of the officers in the group is the one who blocked my driveway. Anyways, the captain orders coffee. And I regretfully inform him that there is a 5 minute wait on coffee because I got to work extremely late. Captain asked why. So I pulled out my phone and explained that one of his officers blocked my driveway for 45 minutes for a routine traffic stop. Captain proceeds to chew out that officer in front of all of his colleagues and exclaims that nothing short of a life or death emergency should block my driveway. Especially if it will interfere with him getting his morning coffee. It was never blocked again and the captain always got his coffee at 6 a.m. without interruption. My best friend and I rented an apartment together in 2006. They would do things like show up for inspections unannounced, charge us for a bunch of nonsense that wasn't broken slash clean slash needing repair, holding our deposit for months while they tried to find more things to charge us for post move out and so on. We were both 20 to 21 at the time, working paycheck to paycheck. And we were clueless on laws. We didn't have as much information at our fingertips as today on the internet. Smartphones weren't even out yet. At least not at an iPhone level. The little noise old jerk that I was, I took low quality cell phone pics with my flip phone. Documented everything done wrong. I planned on taking them to court. I just looked at all the costs and so on and just gave up didn't have the time, resources, or spirit to push this issue. Fast forward to 2018, I have a filing cabinet with stuff going back to 2003. I pull out the lease agreement from then and see the notes I took on all the ways we got screwed by this property management company. I reread it all, the memories come back, as does the rage and anger. I have the property management company information on the top of the lease. I grin, fire up Google slash Yelp reviews and look them up. I found them. Address matches a document from 2006. I say screw it, let's cook. I begin to write a long review with dates slash timestamps, evidence, interactions and so on. 
talk about how they screwed us out of $1200 basically. Tell people to avoid doing business with them at all costs. They private message me saying I have them confused with someone else. I almost bought it. Then I verify by calling, getting them to confirm their address and so on. I go back and add on the review. They also told me that I had the wrong company and said I may be thinking of company X. They lied to me and almost got another business a bad review. They private messaged me again on Yelp. They threatened legal action and tried to fear monger me. Back then I was making $12 per hour. I make lower six figures now. I'm not worried about legal action and wouldn't mind hiring lawyers to see how it plays out. I call their bluff and I say, that's fine, you screwed me over when I was young, poor, working 12 hour shifts. I am no longer poor, working 12 hour shifts and young slash dumb. I have the time and resources. I will await your legal contacts to reach out to mine. They backpedal hardcore, basically replying by begging. Please, please, please take down those reviews. They have been viewed by so many people. It'll ruin our business. Please take it down. I replied, nope, see you in court. They don't reply. I leave the reviews up and figure they will do nothing. They never did anything. The hilarious part is that my post give others the courage to post their bad experiences. Their 4.5 star rating went to 2 stars. There are at least a dozen posts by others who experienced similar things from the same property management company. So now they have 2 stars and at least 12 reviews going into lints at how their company screwed over tenants. Revenge is a dish served cold. I inadvertently played the long game and got triggered after finding old documents from the rental agreement. Call me Pity Mayo. Edit. Got curious and checked their latest reviews. There are even more bad reviews now. So, I volunteered with a non-profit service club for almost two decades. We had a fundraiser legally licensed gambling in our country that would gross 1.5 mil per year. There were only a dozen members, so we didn't do much except hang out, volunteer for other charities, and re-donate the money with a big presentation check. In 2019, we fired one of the two employees for our fundraiser. I agreed to work for three months as a contractor at $25 per hour until they found a replacement. I found ways to improve the fundraiser and turned the 1.5 mil in annual sales into 8 mil after only 9 months. Then the virus hit and I revamped everything again to get us 50 mil annual sales, 10 mil net profit in 6 months. I was working so hard putting 50 to 60 hour weeks sometimes. The club was pressuring me to submit an invoice as I hadn't been paid the entire time. I wasn't motivated to charge anything since my original intent was to work for free for 3 months, but finally submitted the discounted invoice for 52k for the past 15 months after we all agreed I've been working too long and they dropped the ball in their intention to hire a replacement. They paid, but freaked out on me and accused me of greed, fraud, incompetence and so on. It's a combination of their behavior and them being greedy, pushing for massive donations that will get them ahead in their professions, spending money on fancy gala dinners and golf tournaments with the rich elite of the community and etc. And I was frustrated and pissed beyond belief. I stuck around and sometimes got guilted by members into staying after multiple attempts to quit for another year, out of loyalty to my staff, almost two dozen at that point, and the charities I was involved with for decades. But I finally broke and walked away at the end of 2021. And here is where the malicious compliance comes in. Before leaving, I was implementing a two-point plan for another revamp of the fundraiser to keep up with the huge sales and prices. Each part had benefits and consequences individually, so they had to be implemented together to balance each other out. The first part took a long time to plan before I left, and once it was ready, it was easy to put the second part in action right away. 
I report what I was doing to the club. And they accused me of being incompetent once again for not understanding the consequences of the second part of the plan. They didn't understand the big picture, but I was tired of arguing with them. I implemented the first part as they had approved because everything was already changed over and impossible to revert back. I didn't try to convince them at all about the second part being necessary and left them to deal with the consequences after quitting. A year later, they are accusing me of sabotaging them and not explaining the need for the second part. The fundraiser has fallen apart this past year with less than 2 million sales, but still with massive expenses, as well as a crappy revamped system bleeding money. They have reportedly lost money this year and have no idea what went wrong. I deleted all of my documents and plans when I returned the work laptop to them. Also as malicious compliance because they asked for it in original condition and ready for someone new to use. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.